All right, folks, so now we're going to take a look at how to actually lay out the floor frame for your building. Um, this is a you know, common type of way of uh, framing floors in most you know, residential architecture. Uh, there's a couple you know, important parts we need to be aware of, and they're in your uh, worksheet. Uh, there is what's called a sill plate that sits on top of the foundation. Um, it is the thing that we attach these header joists to, so they are um, two by six typically, uh, however long you need, uh, you know, solid wood blocks that are at the end of the floor joist, and the floor joists run from side to side across the building, and that's what everything rests on top of. So that's what your subfloor is going to rest on top of. That's what you know, your actual like finished flooring, like your laminate or wood or tile or whatever you got on your floor, um, and it's what the uh, wall studs are going to uh, lay on as well. Uh, so <clears throat> we're going to take a look at uh, laying this out for our little garden shed uh, that we're building. Um, so here's what we got so far. We should have a 24 inch high foundation. Now realistically part of that foundation is probably going to be buried in the ground. Depends on your building codes. If we're making a permanent structure like this. Um, first thing I'm going to do before I even start like clicking and building anything is I'm going to go to the tags menu uh, and I'm going to make sure that I've got enough tags here to do stuff. Um, and I'm going to make like I've got an untagged tag, I've got a tag for my layout sketches, um, and I've got a tag for my foundation, and I can use the hide tool to, um, you know, hide stuff from view if I need to, if I want to see different parts of my uh, sketch. So I'm going to create a new tag, and I'm going to call this the floor frame. Uh, this is where we're going to put all the pieces that go together to frame out the flooring. All right. Uh, to start, and I'll make sure you hit the little pencil thing so that you can actually edit it. Uh, to start with my floor frame, I'm going to uh, start with the sill plates for the header joists. Um, pretty simple. It's going to be rectangles, so I'm going to uh, use the rectangle tool. The shortcut is R on your uh, keyboard. Let me hide that little menu. And the since this thing is 12 feet wide, we can definitely find boards that are um, that length. So we can make this sill plate one solid piece. So I'm going to click to make that rectangle. Um, and before I do anything, I'm going to type in the dimensions. It's going to be 12 feet. And I'm going to use what's called a, a 2 by 6 to make this. Um, so the long dimension is 12 feet. Uh, the short dimension here is going to be 6 inches. And so when I go to use my push-pull tool, so it's over here on the menu, or just click P on your keyboard, I'm going to pull this up, click, and I'm going to use, the, again, the nominal measurements for the width of this piece, which is 2 inches. So I can just type in 2 inches, and that's going to size that uh, to the correct dimension. So there I've got a sill plate um, that I can start building up the rest of my uh, floor frame on. I'm going to hit spacebar to get the select tool. Um, and so right now, like if I tried to click and move this stuff around, um, this is like a sketch, and it'll do all kinds of stuff. That's sort of crazy. Um, this rectangular prism that we made is not a coherent piece. Um, it's a bunch of lines and surfaces that are connected together. Uh, so to make this a coherent piece, I'm going to actually click one side of this. Um, you can right click or click with two fingers on your Chromebook. I'm going to select um, all connected and that's going to select all the surfaces and lines that are connected to that face of this object. Uh, and so what I can do then, once I've got that uh, selected, I'm going to right click and there are two different ways of grouping things together. There's an option called to make a component and there's an option called make a group. Um, typically the rule of thumb is if I'm making a component that is a that represents an actual part or piece in my physical design, especially something that might be copy pasted and reused. Um, so you think about a you know solid piece of lumber that I'm going to use at different places in my design. That would definitely be a component. A group is a grouping of things, and typically that involves um, you know several components that I want to function and move together as a group. So this for this particular thing, I'm going to make it a component. Menu is going to pop up. It's going to ask you to define this component. So I'm going to call this. Um, the sill. I'm not going to worry about any of the other settings for right now. Uh, but now that will make that a you know one solid piece, and I can click this, you know, move it around, and it all moves together. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually to add a little aesthetic value to this component. I'm going to go over here to the materials tab. 
And this is where we can set the color of surfaces and parts and different things. Um, and there's you know some colors you can choose from. That's all well and good. If you go over here to this little search thing, um, it'll pop up uh, a lot of different types of materials that have kind of like Minecraft style textures that you can use. Um, I'm going to go down to wood. I'm going to grab one of these that looks kind of like what I would expect my uh, you know, two by four material to look like. Because um, this is going to represent, well, I guess in this case is a two by six, but uh, a material such as uh, framing lumber. All right. O to orbit around. There I've got my first sill plate. Uh, making the next one is actually, you know, even easier. I've already got this one. Um, it's already made a component. It's grouped together. So I can control, I hit M to move and hit con hold down control while I do this. Try that again. There we go. Um, and I can move, copy this piece, stick it over on the other side. You may have to do this in one or two moves, kind of zoom around and reorient the camera to make sure that you get this placed where it needs to be. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm going to do sort of the same thing. I'll hit space to select, click that piece. I'm gonna copy, so control C and paste, control V, um, a piece here. Now, obviously the sill plate that's gonna go along this edge is gonna be quite a bit shorter than uh, the long edge. Um, so I'm gonna have to actually take this uh, piece that I just made and rotate it around and make it a little bit different. And so I'm going to uh, select Q for my rotate tool. I'm gonna zoom in here. Uh, I wanna make sure I'm rotating along the top surface. So I'm gonna click, click again. That's gonna not rotate it where I want it to. So let me try that again. Rotate there, rotate along that axis. There we go. I'm trying to snap it to where the cinder blocks are. I'm gonna move this so that it snaps to this other uh, sill plate. Now what you should have is something that sticks way off the end. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So O to orbit around, um, space, click just to unselect stuff. And I'm gonna use the scale tool. Um, and this, there we go, it's under the move menu. And this scale tool, if I click a part, it'll give me some points where I can uh, like resize stuff. And so obviously I want to uh, just make it shorter. I don't wanna mess with the width or length. So I'm gonna click this red, uh, this cube in the middle. And that's gonna let me resize that dimension. Now you might have to you know, do some clever uh, zooming in and out to scale this, but it should snap it to the face of your existing sill plates. Space, um, I'm gonna uh, control C, control V to copy that piece, stick it sort of where I want it, rotate it around, and move this where I need it to be. And obviously this one should be the exact same length as the opposite side. And so there I've got um, the bottom plates uh, for my, um, my floor frame. Now the next thing I'm gonna work on is putting together the header joists. So the header joists are those supports that go at the end of the floor joist. I'm gonna make them out of the same material um, it's essentially going to be uh, a two by six of uh, you know necessary length. Um, and here's the nice thing is I can pretty much use my existing components to create my header boards. Uh, so I'm going to select Q to rotate. I'm going to take this guy. Think about how I want to do this. I'm going to select this face. go. And that went all kinds of crazy. Let me try that again. I want to try and rotate it around this corner because that's going to get it pretty close to where I want it to be. Um, the software is not behaving, so let's try a different thing. So I'm going to do move, hold down control. So shift move this up. I'm gonna try rotating it again. So rotate it around this point. 
Oof. There we go. Until I get it rotated 90 degrees, then I can move it and place this board at the corner of the existing sill plate. And so that'll serve as the header for my, um, my floor joist. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing over here and actually I'm gonna do a move copy. Oh, come on. Do a move copy with this guy. Stick him over here and not do that whole rotate thing again. Um, for this one over here, let's do kind of the same thing. I think it's gonna be quickest to do a move copy. So I'm gonna move this guy up. I'm gonna hit the Q to rotate. I'm going to try selecting a better rotate point. There we go. And I'm going to move this so it's intersecting at the corner I just made with the other sill plate. And that way, it's pretty easy to rotate around. Look at this other side. <clears throat> Use the scale tool to make that the correct size. To make the one on the other side, space to select, uh, control C, control V, and I'm going to just orbit around to the other side and stick this bad boy right where I need it, right in the corner, making sure it snaps to the corner. And so there I've got um, the sill plate, I've got header boards, and I've got what's actually going to make my uh, first two joists for this, um, for this design. So these are the end joists. Um, and all this stuff, of course, would be uh, screwed together in order to hold it fast. Um, now, I already did some calculations. Um, hopefully, you've done these calculations as well. And we figured out that uh, to create this correctly spaced floor joist, if I want them to be at least 24 inches apart, um, I'm actually going to need seven joists. Well, I've got two of them right in place. So all I need to do is uh, move, copy, five more joists. And so that is easy enough. I'm going to rotate around until I can see one of these inside corners. I'm going to select the Move Copy tool. I'm going to click that guy. I'm going to hold down Control while I do that so it makes a copy. I want to make sure that I am dragging it along that uh, line that intersects the sill and the header. Um, and I think we figured out... Well, we don't want, these can't be 24 inches, but I think 23, 23.625 should work pretty well. Uh, and let me hit times five to make the rest of those, and bam, without too much trouble, I've got floor doors. And they're all pretty much evenly spaced, and they all meet that minimum 24 inch um, distance between them. So this would be a nice strong base for the rest of my uh, floor. So before I let you guys go, I just want to show you a real quick, easy way to put in the subfloor. Uh, and so I'm going to create another tag. I'm going to create this tag for that subfloor. I'm going to hit the pencil to switch to editing the subfloor. Um, and I'm going to select this poor little dude to move him out of the way so he doesn't get like crushed by my subfloor. There we go. Uh, and the subfloor is going to be as simple as a rectangle um, that I'm going to make into a component. Now, typical subfloor is probably broken up into smaller two by four pieces. Uh, the fancy stuff has like interlocking grooves. Um, but for like a cheap gar garden shed, like we're making, the subfloor is probably going to be uh, just uh, what's called OSB, which is wood fibers that have been glued together. Going to make a rectangle for that. I'm going to push pull that up. Uh, typical width is either half inch or three quarter inch. We'll go with the nice stuff and make it uh, three quarter inches thick. And so similar to what I did with like the sill plates to make that a component, I'm going to do the same thing with the subfloor. Hit space to select. I'm going to select this top surface. Right click. So click with two fingers on your Chromebook. Select all connected. Right click that again and we're going to make that a component and I'm just going to call this a subfloor. Uh, 
Now, if I'm working with you know typical OSB, this is going to come in four by eight sheets that you probably have to chop up and um, attach together. Uh, but for what we're doing right now, this will be an easy enough way to represent the sub floor. Um, going back to my materials list, uh, this option down here looks a lot like the OSB fiber board um, that would make up a typical sub floor like this. Um, and again, we've got these tags that we made. So let me switch to untag. Uh, what this is going to let me do is essentially hide stuff and see how this design is built from the ground up. And so um, in the next video, we will continue adding layers, uh, tags to this to create the frame. So see so if you can get your uh, floor framed and we'll be ready for the next part.